Hey, how's it going? I'm Sarcastic with the Hyperloops. So today I kind of want to talk about this newfound meta. Um, you probably may have already seen our emergency broadcast of the new rules change. Um, and as a heads up, I, my wipe, it's like a very, very light amount of rain. So my mm -hmm. wipers are going to turn on every once in a long while. It's just, I'm getting like driplets, so it doesn't stay on as much as after a while I have to like tap it to just clear off the junk. Um, but, so, I don't even know what I'm saying right now. All right, um, so I kind of wanted to talk about like where what we're looking at from a, a, a meta standpoint. So, uh, as you know, the big changes are pretty much all based around the ability to overwrite multiple times around is now locked down to one. Uh, overwriting is my keyword, or at least that's what I've been using for replacing an upgrade and reducing the costs. Um, so I'll call it overwrite through this entire thing in case you didn't know what that meant. So the, the, the key hits are obviously Uncar, Phasma, FN. Um, and then they hit Poe as well so that it didn't turn into a, oh, well, everything else got hit. Let's just go back to Poe Maz because uh, you can't do it anymore. So uh, pretty much that affects almost every current mainstream deck. Um, there were some that have always been around, but they were always like pretty much kicked in the face because of thermal detonator, uh, which is like four wide and stuff. Um, depending on the different versions, like people call it endless swag or four wide. Um, if you run the original like rainbow, or if you run my old rainbow version, it was rainbow troopers. Um, so it different decks, different names, whatever doesn't doesn't realistically matter. Anyways, so the, the current format um, has pretty much shifted back to, uh, like, early Spirits of Rebellion, um, but without Po Maz. So there's, there's a, we have a bunch of people testing and doing all sorts of stuff, and, like, no, no current deck feels so overwhelming that you, like, you're just like, oh, I have to play this. Um, there are... A lot of the, the quote-unquote, like, more broken things are, are pretty much MIA now. Uh, the, I'd say the the most busted ability that or set of, like, circumstances that currently exist is, is pretty much, like, Sabine. Uh, because the, she pretty much, none of her, she wasn't, like, affected. Um, so, like, yes, sure, the overwrite thing messes with, I pull back DL, I overwrite a holdout, okay, I did whatever. Now I'm going to turn that into a second chance. That's gone. Uh, but you can kind of play around that by A, leaving a slot open at all times. So that when you pull back the upgrade, you'll be fine. Um, and then the other thing that got affected is running interference. Um, and not running for itself, but the ability to discard a card to uh, reroll zero dice. You may think like in general, like, oh, big whoop. But that, that had some major effects on uh, certain cards. So Mind Probe. Originally, you couldn't decrease Mind Probe unless you could, or like the, you couldn't pretty much decrease the special from hitting you from five unless you could cast a card. Uh, sometimes you weren't able to realistically cast anything good. Um, so like maybe you cast an upgrade and or you know whatever, and then you were like crap. I didn't want to cast that, but I had to because he was going to mind probe me. Now you can just discard one. Um, we roll zero, and that's like, oh, okay, so now it's four. Uh, for the most part, that, that's not super duper relevant with mind probe, but it is relevant when you take into consideration other things. So uh, let's say you're running uh, Rise Again. You originally had to, like, if you didn't have an upgrade in the discard pile already, you pretty much had to roll out, um, discard something, to re-roll, then you could rise again. So, like, you you missed that entire... Uh, that, like, you, you missed the ability to get in, into play so that then be able to roll it out. So, like, it's detrimental um, from that regard. The... Uh, another thing, if I, it actually helps Sabine because uh, round one, outside of you smuggling something or casting upgrade into upgrade and then bring it back, uh, it, it, it nothing felt good about it. Like, you would have to, let's say, roll out Ezra or whoever the extra character is, then discard the card to re-roll, and then you could pull it back with Sabine. Now you can just be like, pitch the, the upgrade. Okay, done. 
uh, now rip it back, do whatever I'm doing. It's, it's a much smoother set of actions. Uh, so th that'll be interesting. Um, I'm trying to think what else it affects. Oh, you can, so like if you run Boundless Ambition, you no longer have to concern yourself with playing the cards from your hand. You could just be like, pitch, don't want this. All right, cast Boundless now. Um, so it was it was a nerf to certain things and a buff to others. Uh, it, it, it messed with RI now because you can't do the RI full lock. But uh, for the most part, I don't know if we ran RI for the full lock as much as the, the being annoying part. Um, but uh, that rules change also does one other thing. So let's say your opponent had like the perfect set of dice on the table. Like one card in hand. Um, even if it, it's probably a better situation where it's like, let's say Vader had two threes, one card in hand, no other dice. You could have resolved a die, uh, tapped, uh, running interference and done it on, um, resolving. So then what would happen is, is your opponent would either have to pass what you would accept because he has six damage on the table or discard the card and reroll one of the dice. Um, that was, uh. Not a big play for running interference, but it was one of the bigger annoyances because um, you put them in a, a, a sour position. Now that play's not nearly as strong because they can just decide to, to give up the card in their hand and reroll nothing. Uh, so like there, there's still some play there where you're getting them to pitch the last card and waste the extra action, um, especially if you wanted to do something like claim. But it's neither here nor there. Shit happens. We move on. Uh, oh, sorry, I got like a I slept funny. Um, what is it? So, the, none of the decks feel, like, amazing right now. To me, it kind of feels almost like Awakening format all over again. Uh, you really don't know, like, what's great, what's not great, but we have a bunch of tools, or new tools, to kind of see what's going on in the old days. You're probably going to see, like, the return of Jabba Dooku, um, which could potentially even end up being, like, um, Jabba Ventress because then you're you're trying to get the discard from their hand and you're you're forcing them to do re-rolls and you're like removing stuff and it, it can put them in a more foul position um but it you're less likely to stay uh, alive longer for it so like where do you where do you draw the line because dooku before would stay alive for forever so you couldn't target him had a target job up and then after that dooku would try to kill you with whatever upgrades he got at the end um, but so there's that I could potentially see the return of Vader, um, Big Daddy Vader, um, plus like Tusken Raider or Sienna or like the, the, the Magna Guard, depending on what you want to run. And uh, that's a bit scarier now because the the damage output has been lowered via uh, not team incompetence, but like the team lineups are no longer as smooth. So uh, like Kylo Two doesn't have a very great team uh, like teammate. Sure, he can for four dice. He'd have to go with like Bala or Aliciana, um, Zine, but I, you don't really want to do that. Like none of those are great. You can still go Kyle with one die FN, um, which isn't a huge drawback. Um, and I can see a lot of people trying to, to do that. The overwrite rule screws with that uh, a little bit though, because you can't you can no longer machine gun, which was one of the, the scarier things with that deck. Um, it, it can be tough if you, like, let's say you wanted to go... Oh, also, Viper Knife got hurt. So they, they, they can't cheat through shields as, as well anymore either. Which can be pretty brutal for them. Uh, I'm trying to think. Uh, Qui-Gon Cannon, Qui-Gon Ray. Uh, thoughts of, like, little weird, uh, quirky, like, Qui-Gon decks are going to come out the works. Uh, probably going to see some, some crazy, like, Qui-Gon yellow deck. Uh, for like hunker down on him every round shenanigans because it's, it's essentially like a better protection um, trying to think uh, you're going to see some like four wide vehicle decks and like endless swag uh, you'll probably see the, the return of like the three three character five die decks so like Maserati um, I don't think Maserati like got a single nerf out of this entire subset of things uh, everything seemed like it was, relatively speaking, in their favor. Um, but they weren't amazing to begin with. So, like, the format's going to slow down quite a bit at the beginning. Um, 
we're all still trying to figure out what's what's the most efficient plays, like where's the efficient aggro deck, like can we meet the, the, the damage thresholds of old, um, which realistically like, we cannot, we can't, but the, like it's it's impossible to meet those thresholds as, as often as we were doing uh, prior to uh, the fackening or whatever we want to call it now, nerfed them. Um, Almost like a reset. We'll call it the Destiny reset or something. But there, everything I've been playing right now seemed okay. Um, I have I built a, a, a an FN deck that seemed fine. Um, it wasn't as demoralizing as the old version. Uh, I think it's still pretty good, but it, it needs some tweaking to to figure out the figure out everything for it. Um, trying to think what else is there like it, it's the team concepts or the, the, the team team creations are much harder now so things are going to be realistic like much weirder you probably see like boss come out of the woodworks um a lot of the, the the lesser played characters can try to make a run now and then things like qui-gon cannon because vibro knife nerf and the the damage uh was scaled back a little bit uh it's probably going to be a, a heavy player at the beginning because it seemed very strong. Um, you pretty much just just load up on defense and then just, just poke and prod your opponent until they're dead. Um, the die sides are not amazing, but not bad. And if, unless your opponent can like bypass shields, which really doesn't exist anymore, um, it, it, it like they're going to be blocking tons of damage. And if they're loaded up with shields, they'll just instead. You know, do little pee shots at your guy and the damage will stack up and he'll die so uh we'll kind of have to see where that's going um i th hmm. there's some interesting stuff running like poe ezra um use ezra to like ramp and and screw with the opponent uh so they don't have resources and then uh, Pull throws out like Y wing specials and tries to get them back. And it'll be a much slower deck with like C three POs now. Um, and then I don't know. It, like uh, Vader two, who I call Anakin, is gonna eventually lose that Anakin moniker because they're coming out with actual Anakin. Um, so I don't know where he stands anymore because before it was him and Phasma, and that deck was like crazy because it was the amount of damage it could output but now it just doesn't seem worth it anymore um because phasma or anakin by himself wasn't very very great i guess you can still pair him with kylo but unless the opponents are playing expensive things kylo is very very weak um, i guess you'd still be able to have him paired up and like just stop the opponent from doing stuff but if kylo fn still seeing him play like the the whole mono anything is gonna have problems. Um, I have a feeling the, the the big the big decks are probably gonna be like the three character decks. It looks like we're gonna be going back to a uh, potential three character format. Um, whereas the the current state was uh, back to two characters. We're gonna see the return of uh, Awakenings Phasma uh, with some uh, her guardian friends. Uh, I'm trying to think. Unfortunately, Bazine is a unique. If Bazine wasn't unique, they they would have all sorts of ways they could run that deck. Um, but I'm trying to think if blue is any better than yellow, and I don't think so. Um, like Savage Nan, bait and switches. He doesn't like his. Um, those are all very good cards. So we're definitely gonna see Old Phasma make her way back. Um, yeah, but like it, it really feels like we're going back to the beginning of SOR. You're gonna see Palpatine return for a bit. It like it's, just, it's shit's a mess. Um, people don't know what to play, what we're doing. We have the tabletop season three coming. Uh, we have to have deck lists uh, by Monday at noon Pacific. So for me, that's about 3 p.m. and I work on a Monday, so that means Sunday night into Monday morning is when I'm gonna have to like lock my deck in and send it over. Um, 
and I like realistically I, I don't know where I want to be I feel like I want to be around 24 health with five dice or somewhere around like 29 you know like that 28 to 32 health range with four characters and four dice um, I don't know like the I, I definitely say like get a bunch of testing in with the different decks and whatever you whatever flows best for your your play style and like the, the damage outputs which you probably stick with um, there's gonna be a lot of like two, the two character versus four character directions are very weird um, some two character decks have no problems with four character decks, but then they get obliterated by things like Sabine or anything with like burst. And then the, the four character decks uh, can survive the burst. But if their damage output is is slowed enough, then uh, it, it's it's going to turn into like a hairy situation because the the, the burst is going to be capable of just sniping out guys um, each round if the the build up is allowed. Um, probably see the return of holocron stuff because uh, you should be capable of surviving just a little bit longer uh, I think rend is going to go away for the most part uh, so like how would I say this I think Ren was run before pretty much to stop uh, imperial inspection yeah it's pretty much imperial inspection and then if you got it off on a holocron you were like all right cool or like if you needed to hit a four speed perfect if someone crazy was running hunker down good job um chance cube same thing but the, the the main reason i believe was inspection so with inspection pretty much non-existent now because it's a one and done um i could see rend co being completely pulled from decks but if uh if you do run them then i think the reasoning would probably be something like aftermath uh so in the if you're playing like four character versus four character and an aftermath comes down that that match is going to be a mess um so I could see that being for there, potentially for Salvage Stand, which uh, may return as a, a, a main player, because Salvage Stand was a big pain in the butt. Um, the when the format's slower and we're doing stuff at at a, at a, a snail's pace, uh, Salvage Stand is is too detrimental. Um, you can't build up for any of the expensive stuff, providing that you're getting hit with it every round. If they're not hitting resources, are they instead hitting damage? Um, so, like, I can see that returning. Uh, trying to think what other old school decks there were that that will probably get. But like, I, uh, the Hero Recon Mill is probably going to to rear its ugly head now. Um, I can't think of anything that affected it here. I think it was all like net positives, and if people felt that the deck was good before, it could be extremely usable right now. Um, you have to concern yourself with getting bursted out, and the fact that people are going to return uh, to a shield hating meta uh, because because of Qui Gon Cannon. Um, so you're probably going to see stuff like Intimidate, uh, poss possibly see On the Hunt make its return, and like. On the Hunt used to be a really good card, but then the format became too fast, it just wasn't worth it, because you couldn't get to the, the special on it uh, at a decent pace. Um, like, it was only 33%, so it was kind of like Force Throw status, except... Oh, I'm sorry, it's boring, I'm tired. Uh, except Force Throw cost three and did a bunch of damage. On the Hunt instead will, is good for control, um, and damage via shield removal. Um, I guess how I would term it. Uh, we're going to see Han Ray make its return. So I know Enigma666 is going to be pretty happy. He uh, he made Top Cut in TTS. I swear to God, the last week he had no wins. No games played. And then it was like, blam. Three games played. Three people, I think, like, uh, zeroed his bracket. So they, they gave all the wins to everybody. And that was it. Um, so it'll be... It'll be interesting to see what happens. It's, a, it's pretty wide open right now. Um, I'd probably guesstimate that whatever ends up doing very well um, in TTS Season 3 are going to become the, the main players um, for this coming up uh, regional um, like time frame, I guess. 
Like, it's really weird to call it because it's like November to March. Um, but, see, we're October right now. I think season three should be finishing uh, sometime in the middle of November. Because uh, I think they're setting up for like four days each and it's top 64. So that, that should be like eight sets. So it should be like a month and some change. So, uh, end of November. So probably around Thanksgiving. Um, the, 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 the setup should be done as far as like who won, what was doing well. And we're probably going to see a bunch of that. Um, it's going to be really weird. Um, yeah, the, the, I don't know. The format's just so wide open right now. And we can't really tell what's going on. Um, we're getting as much testing as we can. Uh, we, so like on our Discord... Um, pretty much for the most part, every every game I play that I remember to turn on the recorder is recorded, and then I I post the videos and I try to talk during them unless I'm speaking with my opponent. Uh, so if you're lost in the world and uh, you're just not too too sure how you you know how to continue, um, feel free to join the Patreon. Um, it's uh, I think www.patreon.com/hyperloops. Um, and I'll have tons of, of videos and stuff going, like, uh, realistically by Monday, um, I don't know how much work I'll, I'll get in, so if you're looking for a deck for Season 3, um, there's a lot of, the, like, our whole community right now is, is pretty much just, just, just testing their minds out of the format, they're, they're trying to figure out what's good, what's not good, like, different deck lists, like, make alterations, and the, the format is, is all over the place. Um, there's a couple decks we like that, that we think are very good. Um, but there, there's lots of random issues um, with them, apparently. Uh, it, it, it's a lot... It's a... How would I say this? It, it's kind of like the circle of life, I guess I would say. So, like, you have the, like, the food chain, except the food chain is just a circle. So we'll have like the predators eating the herbivores, the herbivores eating the 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 like I forget what the hell grass and stuff are called. Um, and then uh, when the carnivores die, they're eating or it, it's surviving off of carnivore and herbivore dead bodies to regrow itself. Um, it's a little less. Okay, so it's nothing like that as far as a top-down perspective, but it, it's it's more just triangle. So like. Control beats mid-range, mid-range beats aggro, aggro beats control. Um, that's what we're looking at right now. So, like, any of the, the crazy thermal decks should pretty much be able to beat up on uh, four wide. Four wide should be able to beat up on regular two-character decks that can't output enough damage um, at a quick enough speed. And then uh, those decks that, that do slow grindy stuff beat up the, the burst decks because the burst decks will lose a guy and then be dead. Um... Or, I guess it wasn't even burst anymore. We were talking about thermal stuff. Because thermal stuff is just not good enough there. Um, so, we'll kind of just see where the format takes us. But, uh, I wanted to do something to try to talk about, like, some of the older decks. And, uh, give you guys uh, something to work on and look forward to. Uh, I'm going to have another promo for uh, the Content Maker Showdown. So, check for that video soon. Or it might even pop out at the same time as this, because um, I'm gonna load them one after the other. So, I think that's all I really have to say right now. The format looks interesting. Uh, I realistically, I'm not the type that will sit here and be like, "Oh, they messed up." Da 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 da. Like, why would they do this? Laws change, rules change. We get over it. We have to move on with it, and that's that. Um, so, let's just uh, put our head in the books get some testing in, try to figure where to go from there. Uh, but I, I would I would say that this is probably the best thing that could happen uh, to the, the more casual players, or it might be one of the best things to happen to the game in general. Um, people with very large collections had a lot of it wasted uh, during the last format, or as of like a week ago. Because there were only certain decks that could contend, um, and if you weren't playing those decks, you had to, like, build a deck that could, like, force itself to contend, and there weren't many, many decks that could attempt to do that, 
and there weren't many cards that you could play. Now, we're kind of back to uh, a, a larger card pool. Um, so like, when, when a set gets created in any card game, for the most part, less than half of that set is usable. Yeah, less than half. Um, there is going to be like 10% of it that are going to be like great cards. Then maybe like another 15, 20% of like niche cards or good cards. Actually, they'll probably just be good cards. They'll be good like whatever stuff. And then like another 20% will be like niche, like super duper. It's only played in this one specific deck and this one specific like it's for this specific type of situation. Um, and then the other 50% poop. Complete and utter poop. Um, if you go look through your dice, you're going to see like a ton of stuff where you're like, oh, well, this this could be play of... Nah, no, this is a pile of shit. Try to put it in a deck. Start with those cards as the first part of the deck. Then as you're building, you're going to be like, oh, oh, I forgot this card. Crap, what do I take out? I take out Scatter Blaster because this thing's a pile of poop. Poop. Um, but yeah, so I would say that like there, we got to a point where even the niche cards like were completely unusable. Um, like you couldn't play Rebel Guard, um, not the character, the, the, the event, I think it was Rebel Guard. Yeah. Where like you had to have like a, a red gun showing or it was a red card and you had to have a gun showing you could eat it like a, a non-damage side it was just too slow and heroes were too awful um, you can actually play hero decks right now they may not be super amazing the villain decks still have a step up because they have a, a more welded well uh, well rounded like uh, upgraded and event lineup set up uh, but the, the, the blue hero seems very doable behind Qui-Gon um, there may be other decks too. The three character decks uh, shouldn't get bursted down nearly as fast now. They'll have the extra time that they need to, to try to get set up um, with defenses and upgrades to output buttloads of damage. Um, looking at you, Cannon, double pad one. You know you need all the time and the monies. Uh, um, like I said before, Maserati. Uh, what other hero decks? You probably see some crazy... Lando deck somewhere, um, probably not very good though, but it, it's, you're going to see the return of the, the, the cheap two drop deck, um, because inspections poop, um, Thrawn got kicked in the face when Uncar got hit, there's probably going to still be people playing Thrawn with one die Uncar. um, I think you could probably try stuff like E-Thrawn, e, e um, like she has discard side, she has some disrupt side, she has some shields to help, she has the resource side. Um, I don't think you're really going to try and use that uh, that special often with her. But if you're going the the vehicle version, I guess you could do that. But Thrawn becomes the main guy you have to hit at that point um, when you're like attacking. So like it's fine. Chance cube helps make up for the the resource generation. So like that that very well could be an actual deck. Um, and it's just going to be slow and grindy because you can't do, uh, like, focus into to six resources anymore. Um, you'll be more inclined to, like, well, I guess if when you hit Chance Cube, you can. But that that costs you more up front. And it's not, like, character dice driven. We'll kind of see how that goes. It'll be interesting to watch, though. Um, Thrawn Bazine, keep an eye out for it. Uh, you're going to see the return of... Uh, I'm going to say Smurl's Grifters. Uh, if anyone doesn't know who Smurl is, uh, that means you pretty much don't hang around on the discords. Um, Smurl, to me, is the premier uh, mill guy. Uh, now, I don't think I've played him much, so I can't say much from a, a, a skill level perspective. But the man loves mill. He is the king of Mill. If he's playing, it's probably Mill. I have not seen him play anything besides Mill. He eats, shits, sleeps, dreams of Mill. Um, all the time. All day. I don't know how he does it. 
he was planning to play it during the aggro format. He played it the formats before. He was all about like one punch Vader life. If you ever seen that article when we had it, that was uh, done by newbie. Like Smurl was was living the middle life always at all times. But yeah, so he he's hard at work um, trying to, to 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 mill up the format and nothing. This was this was a huge buff to him, is how I'd say it. Like this entire RRG, like if there was one guy who had an active part making sure everything was written there probably him he was just like ah, I don't like drunk car fuck drunk car oh excuse my language ah, ha, ha. deal with it sorry um but it's mill mill's in an interesting place because of the damage and scale back so like the thing was that I still don't really like playing mill at all um but where do you draw the line on being able to win if you can win the game round four, um, playing mill, that's pretty much what everything you ever hoped and dreamed for. Um, yeah, everything you ever hoped and dreamed for because th th that's where you're trying to get the finish the game with all the regular decks right now. And uh, the regular decks are just, just slowing themselves down, trying to like, two, two die decks need to like have enough survivability to be able to kill um, four guy decks while not like losing their character right away. Um, four guy decks have to get enough damage to kill the two guy decks fast enough so they, they can have like a 3v1 situation or a 2v1 situation and clean up. Um, and then Mill's just sitting there like, <laughs> um, so like I said, you're gonna see Jabba Dooku, that should make its comeback. Um, Ankar as a 15 health guy in the current format I don't think is going to stick around just because inspection's gone um, but who really knows Smurl's Grifters is a 3 character deck uh, that plays mill based on Jabba and things like no diversion or I think it's no, no diversion no disintegration sorry uh, that's like mill 1 but if the other one's in your discard pile you mill 3 and then uh, loose ends um, sorry about the wiper thing um that is eat, uh, it's ambush. You gotta like eat one of your ranged dice and then mill your opponent for four. Um, so that one is almost like a, a full, a full turn. Um, the interesting thing there though is that it's, it's pretty much a buyout for four. So you could, you're essentially paying two and uh, a ranged die to mill four so they're treating a range die as almost worth two damage because it's a it's a it's a restriction uh, essentially for playing it, but it's it's just interesting to see. Um, so like, I between loose ends and, and no disintegration, um, if they just hit those, that's like seven. Just one, like one of the big ones for no diversion, and then one loose ends, it's seven. Um, so if they're playing command center at all, then. Uh, nine. They hit it twice. Then it's it's eleven. So like a, the four the four round thing is very live. Um, as far as like being able to do that to your opponent. So it'll be interesting to see how that goes down. Like, could Mill be the greatest thing that ever existed? Smur would be happy. Actually, he might not be. I I don't think he likes playing anything mainstream. And that's why he plays Mill. And if Mill became mainstream, would he then switch to aggro? Would he switch sides? But, um, so we'll see where we're going right now with this. Um, I say um a lot. Really, I don't know. Because, like, do I do stuff off the cuff and then I say um and so a lot? Or do I just start talking slower so my brain can catch up? I don't know. I don't know. Hmm. The world will never know. But, let's see what else is there. I don't know, man. I like me some five die villains. I'm also probably gonna go back to Rainbow Troopers because I love me some Balotik and Night Sister, and I will try to play them for the rest of my life because, to me, they may be the best two characters in the game. They didn't know the nerf wasn't good enough. Oh, side note: I do have an FN deck. Um, I do have FN. Uh, it seems fine. I think I have to tweak it a bit more so it, it, it operates a little bit better. 
but uh, I do like the deck as a whole. So if I can smooth it out, I'm pretty sure it could actually become uh, a contender. So who knows? You may see me play some some FN action season three, and uh, I'm just gonna just gonna ruin people's lives because they thought he was gone. That's what they know. He was like Jason or Freddy Krueger. As long as someone remembers him, he'll never die. But. Donnie Sarkasi with the Hyperloops reporting out. Uh, I can't think of anything else right now. So we'll kind of see how that goes. Ooh, 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 sorry, sorry, I lied. Kylo 2 uh, can also be played with Grievous. And that may be scary enough if a bunch of people are going mono route. Um, or even two color. Um, two color is a bit harder for Kylo to guess on. But uh, they're. Oh, sorry. Some of the mainstream depths look like they're going to be mono. So like Sabine Ezra, um, Qui-Gon Cannon. If those are seeing a ton of play, uh, Kylo Grievous could be in a very good place. Uh, especially since because if he kills off those characters, he can steal the stuff. Versus the redeploys. Um, he could steal the redeploy deck. Redeploys from the four character decks. But um, it looks like uh, FFG messed up, I guess. So uh, because they changed redeploy to a before effect... Uh, Grievous got affected there because Grievous is also a before effect. Meaning that the normal stack for that would go... Um, character's about to be defeated. Both would attempt to trigger. Battlefield Holder uh, decides who gets the resolve first. So obviously the Battlefield Holder would choose to resolve the one that has their redeploy. Uh, as opposed to the, the, the Grievous being able to do it. But uh, it, it kind of depends on how fast... The Kylo Grievous is because uh, under normal circumstances, let's say you're playing against three or four character deck, you should probably already be faster than them. So if you're faster than them, you get to uh, steal the the you'll you'll pretty much normally have the battlefield, meaning you got to to crush their guy. Um, so we'll kind of see where that goes. But I guess in the, the the rules reference guide, they left in the part where it said Grievous steals the redeploy uh, before he steals the redeploy before the redeploy would trigger. Um, and they didn't bold it in red, I guess. Um, I have not yet looked. Um, so if they bolded it in red, uh, do not 100% quote me. But I remember going through it with Mike um, while we were looking at it, and I didn't see that anywhere. So uh, the in theory, the, the redeploy change was a huge nerf to General Grievous. And he already wasn't seeing play, so it's kind of brutal. But he he's in a very good spot as far as um, ruining people's lives. If it like getting the kill, you, there's so many like good weapons you can steal right now. Uh, you take like an X8 or an ancient lightsaber, any of that stuff. That's very strong stuff. Um, stealing Ray's lightsaber, um, Z6s. Uh, yeah, like that can be can be crazy. So uh, I'd say look to see if that ends up get, seeing play. Uh, it, it, it can probably have massive amounts of issues with, with like, four wide because the damage cap there is, is, requires too much effort for them. Um, especially with their health pool being 22. But uh, if they go, like, a holocron package, like, how scary is that? If they go weapons, like, what, what where do they go with this? This is kind of going to be... I think it's going to be similar to the, the old, like, Grievous Dooku, where except Grievous used to be the big guy and then uh, get focused down and then you deal with Dooku later. It's going to be Kylo being the big guy and do you focus a one die Grievous just because of his ability or do you just have to go after Kylo because that ability and the damage sides are, are crazy but uh, so yeah anyone who realized this video was still ongoing when I tried to say bye bye good job anyone else haha <laughs> sucker but uh, on a sarcastic reporting out the hyperloops this is my vlog on some meta musings and the fact that I really don't know what's going on amazingly because I've been playing everything. Palpatine's good. Maybe. Sorta. I don't know. But three shields is great. Deuces!